of all, I just want to say thank you to everybody for being here. Uh, this is a really, really important topic to discuss. So thank you for taking the time to come and learn a little bit about what we're up to. Um, my name is Cheryl Faith. I'm the Dean of Academic Development and ID Coordinator. Uh, and uh, I just want to acknowledge all the wonderful people that contributed to the creation of this presentation. We have Graham Kassan, uh, Kassan the IT Director. We have uh, Randy Solomon, Tech Specialist. Uh, Eric Petersel, Head of School, and Alana Sina, our MYP advisor, they all contributed uh, to uh, the creation of this presentation. Also, the, the inspiration and information for some elements of this presentation uh, came from the head of IB assessment, Dr. Matt Glansville's presentation uh, from the 2023 IB Global Conference this past summer. Um, so let's begin. Uh, by talking a little bit about where we were in the spring. So sometimes uh, when we want uh, students to provide an opinion, uh, we might use something like this, which is uh, kind of a decision matrix. And where we were in the spring was probably where the rest of the world was because AI came on so quickly. We were really in that kind of lower left box. We really had somewhat low confidence and low understanding of what AI really meant uh, for our educational institution. Um, so we weren't really show, sure how to best use it and how and when to restrict it. Um, but we knew that we want to foster students who understand themselves and the world around them. And AI is the future. This is the new reality. Um, and it will permeate almost any field that they could possibly go into in the future. We understand that that's probably what's going to happen. So really sitting on our heels was not our choice. It was not something that we could choose. Um, so we understood that we needed to be mindful about our approach, mindful in our use and implementation, mindful in how we restrict and limit it and uh, what technologies to take on so that we could stay on the cutting uh, edge of AI. So let's let's start with our concerns, but I think because I think a lot of schools, a lot of institutions would share these concerns, but this is what what we had. We were concerned about uh, age restrictions because uh, different AI platforms have different uh, age. Well, sorry, most of them have a very similar age restriction, actually, and that's 13. Um, we were also kind of concerned about making sure that we were sharing our AI practices and policies as quickly as we could, because we knew it was already something students, many students were using. Um, we were also a little concerned about accuracy of information and bias, copyright and academic honesty. Uh, a big one is authentic assessment of learning, especially as educators, um, and alignment with best practices, because teachers uh, were beginning to, to experiment with, with AI we wanted to make sure that whatever results were coming back were actually aligned with current best practices. Um, uh, we were also we also really wanted to be able to leverage AI for administrative tasks to make uh, to streamline and make those easier. And we were very concerned with the sharing and storing of sensitive information uh, within AI. So uh, it's very possible as well that 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 since AI is in its infancy within education that more concerns may arise. So that certainly is not an exhaustive list. So uh, basically, I've split those concerns into three main ways that we're going to address them and, or already have addressed them in some regard. Uh, communication, education, and innovation. So these are not in no way isolated from one another. Uh, certainly, you know, education is absolutely essential and uh, properly communicating and innovating in regards to AI. So uh, yes, they, they are not isolated in any way. So let's start with communication. Uh, so we needed to be able to communicate the age restrictions and we needed to do a lot of this through policies and sharing our practices. So, uh, in in august we we developed a policy based on some of the age restrictions that already exist uh so we have already created those limitations and policies we have presented those to teachers and provided resources we've organized this parent information night but there'll be more information coming and we've aligned ourselves with current ib policy and ib schools worldwide um what we will do well that that's actually an even longer list than what's here but we will continue to evolve our policies because this is going to be ever changing. 
We're going to provide more PD and resources for teachers. We're going to continue to inform parents and we're going to continue to communicate with other independent schools um, so that we, we, we stay on top of what's current. So this is our present policy on AI. Um, this is something that we shared with teachers in August. So teachers are encouraged to use AI on their own computers as a tool in the classroom for critical thinking and to teach ethical and effective use of AI. Um, so within Leo Beck, students wouldn't officially gain access on their computers until grade eight in January when they are all 13 years old and permitted to use it with permission according to most AI platform policies. Uh, we can't control their use of AI outside of the walls of Leo Beck. Um, but homework as usual will never be used as assessment. We don't use homework as assessment. Um, if parents permit the use of AI at home, it must be, especially when it, in regards to research, it must be cited and other sources must be found to back up that information. So it's really no different from them using other things like Wikipedia. They would have to back that up with other sources. So education, this is a very big one, <laughs> of course. Uh, so we will use education and our abilities as a community of professional educators to address these issues. The accuracy of information and bias, copyright and academic honesty, authentic assessment of learning, uh, which, which uh, Alana will be um, speaking to. But I, first I wanna say um, in the next slide um, that this is an education evolution, not a revolution by any means. Uh, these quote unquote threats to teaching and assessment are, are in no way new to us. Uh, education has had to evolve with, with many new types of technology. When calculators came about, oh my goodness, well, we had to adjust to that. When spell check came, we had to adjust to that. And when Google came, that was, that was huge. Uh, education really had to evolve. Uh, so we're, especially within this field, we're used to evolving. This is a big evolution, but it's in no way a revolution. Um, and, and I'm sure many of you could think of some other things that, that you could add to that list. So in this new world of technologies, educators need to continue to evolve how they engage with students in the classroom, how they choose content, how they develop essential approaches to learning skills, which are those very essential learning skills that we teach very explicitly in the IB. Um, definitely how we foster a culture of critical thinking around technology and how we create authentic assessments. This is nothing new. We, we do this all the time within education. So right now, I'm going to pass things along to our wonderful MYP advisor, Alana Sina, to explain some of the ways um, and give some examples of how AI will certainly uh, uh, permeate our classroom environment and change and maybe evolve the way we, we teach to some degree. So I want to start out by saying that we do not have all the answers. We are on a learning journey, just like every other school. Luckily, we are an IB school and we already value the process that students go through to complete a task. We value collaborative approaches to learning. We focus on skills-based teaching, differentiated and authentic assessment, and we use varied approaches to our teaching. We also incorporate Tukun with embedment of service learning and we help students build character through the learner profiles and ATL skill development. AI is just pushing us in further into best practices. So with the influx of AI resources to which students now have access, we have a responsibility as educators to ensure that these resources, like any other tool, are being used effectively and appropriately by our students and in adherence to, with our academic honesty policy. AI resources provide educators another opportunity to help students strengthen their critical thinking skills and their research skills. And just like any research tool or source that our students would use, when using AI, our students need to ask themselves the following questions. So what information is being presented to me? What data? data is missing from the information. So for example, uh, the free version of ChatGPT has very limited knowledge of world events beyond September 2021. 
If there is data missing, why might that data have been omitted? How reliable or accurate or credible is the information that they are looking at and how do they know? What other sources can either verify or even dispute the information that is presented by the AI? Are there any biases that are presented in the text that they're looking at? Are there any citations that they have been um, included with the research? And if, any, if so, are they accurate? And how do students learn? How, what are the methods by which they actually have to cite the AI sources in their own bibliographies? We also want students to be responsible digital citizens that have an understanding of privacy concerns with AI. Students need to be cognizant of the information they are entering into AI and ensure that no personal or private information is being shared on AI platforms. This is an extension of our digital citizenship lessons that already occur at Leo Beck beginning in grade four. So I wanna share some specific examples of how AI can be used in the classroom. And again, please note that teachers are just at the start of this process. Like all educators around the globe, they will be experimenting with the AI in their classrooms, using a critical eye and adjusting their program to better understand when to leverage and when to restrict the use of this technology. So AI can be used in the classrooms with teacher prompts and with guided discussions. So for example, the teacher can ask AI questions such as, what are 10 ways to eradicate poverty? The teacher could share the generated answer with the students and the students could then rate the importance or viability of the AI generated ideas. Or the teacher could ask AI to generate a number of research points for a topic and then print the list for the students. The students can use other sources to assess the accuracy and bias of the generated research and they could brainstorm what elements of research are still missing. They could then complete their research with other sources and use the research for a real world task. So for example, students could use AI to research factors that affect global warming, and they would then critically analyze the research. And then students could choose a local or global company and evaluate how it's contributing to global warming. So even with teacher led use of AI where the students aren't actually doing the research themselves, there's still a way to critically analyze the data that's been processed. Um, AI can also be used in the classrooms where students are old enough to use it on their own, but the students are still guided by the teachers. So for example, students could use it to generate creative writing prompts or ideas, or students could use it for research for a project or task and then independently use, uh, conduct a critical analysis of the generated research and before using that data in their work, or after writing an opinion piece, students could put their writing into ChatGPT and ask it to rebut their opinion. Students could then use the rebuttal that was generated by ChatGPT to rewrite their work and strengthen their argu arguments. Or students could put their own class notes into ChatGPT and ask it to create review questions for them. Teachers are always looking for the most authentic ways to assess students, but AI has presented some new challenges. This requires teachers to value the types of assessment where human interaction and relationships are prioritized. If students use AI to help them with assignments, similarly, if they use other sources for research, they still need to be able to answer thinking and application questions in class from either their peers or their teachers or they would need to apply the research information to some sort of argument or debate. There are also many forms of assessment that are not impacted by student use of AI, such as handwritten tests or hands-on interactive experiences amongst many others. The ethical use of AI, like any other research tool, falls under Leo Beck's academic honesty policy. So here we are at the innovation stage of things, um, which to me is a, is a pretty exciting one. Um, I think we had three areas that we could really, really address through innovation, um, and that was alignment with best practices. So ensuring that whatever um, our faculty is searching is actually very much aligned with the most current uh, research around education and, uh, you know, being able to leverage AI so that it makes 
uh, the administrative tasks more streamlined and accurate and, uh, and again, aligned with best practice and the sharing and storing of sensitive information, which Alana touched upon. Um, so let's, let's begin. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the uh, a question that we asked staff in, in August. Um, so why would someone be passionate about going into the field of education? So this was a question that we asked faculty uh, early, early uh, in this school year. And uh, we asked this question with a purpose. Um, and their responses were things like to connect with students, uh, to form strong learning communities, to collaborate with students and colleagues, uh, facilitating great lessons. They were the most human aspects of education that they valued the most. Um, so when we look at an educator's administrative tasks, it's lesson, uh, you know, unit planning, it's writing progress reports, it's finding resources, it's creating assessments and marking rubrics. And no teacher uh, who went into teaching for specifically these tasks. Um, this is not what ignites their passion. Um, and they do take up many, many, many hours of their prep and personal time. Um, uh, they didn't go in to struggle with wording on comments. None went in, in, in to format, you know, rubrics. Uh, none went into teaching to analyze data and search the web for new lesson plan ideas. Uh, so let's let's look at AI from kind of a glass half full perspective. So AI could drastically improve and streamline the administrative aspects of teaching, which is extremely exciting. This is true for pretty much every profession. Those administrative tasks could easily be taken over by AI. So the, uh, the human and creative elements of teaching, you know, why we all went into this profession um, are what is, is the focus, really. That's what we uh, get to focus on even more. We've already had tools to make our administrative tasks faster. Uh, we've had those for a long time, but none have been this fast or accurate, which is very exciting. Um, so all of that is a great glass half full side of things. Here's the con, here's the glass half empty. Um, I don't like being a pessimist, but we're gonna go there. Um, basically ChatGPT and other AI platforms and engines, they're not encrypted. So therefore, any personal or organizational data that we input can and will be shared if it's entered into the system. Um, so that, that's very concerning for us because we really value privacy. Um, and they also pull from sources like Reddit. Sometimes, sometimes they do pull from academic uh, journals and things like that, but they also pull from sources like Reddit or blogs where people may or may not be promoting best practices on sound and current educational research. So that, that is a, a big concern for us. Um, so how are we going to address all these? So here, here we go. This is basically how we're gonna address it. So I'll give you a little background. This is uh, basically TODL, which is our learning management system that we took on a few years ago. And uh, we wanted to be on the cutting edge and TODL was and it was created by educators and engineers that work within an international baccalaureate uh, educational institution and toddle just happened to jump into the ai game very early uh, and they introduced toddle ai uh, this past summer at the ib global conference um, which caused an entire room of hundreds of educators to gasp um, they opened up the opportunity for 50 schools worldwide to pilot their new AI feature, and we raised our hands to be one of those schools and were accepted. So we are now going to be the first school in Ontario and one of five schools nationwide to pilot Toddle AI, essentially an encrypted virtual teacher's assistant program to think like an IB educator. So I'll, I'll let you watch the brief video. We are unveiling Toddle AI, and we believe it will revolutionize the way teachers work. Our goal with Toddle AI is to provide each teacher with a personal teaching assistant. 
an assistant that possesses near magical abilities picture jarvis to your iron man toddle ai will not only help teachers reclaim their time but also help them elevate their teaching practice so they can provide each child the learning experience they deserve and we are integrating toddle ai deep into our system enhancing everything from curriculum planning and assessments to progress reports family communication and data analytics we are so i, I want to make something clear that no matter what the human senses our creativity uh, all the things that we value about teaching will always be at the heart of what we do toddle will just make those aspects of our teaching that take up the most amount of our time those administrative tasks to be easier and far more streamlined so that they can focus on the things that they really love to do and that's teach your children which is really wonderful so i'll i'll conclude i'll do a little conclusion and and talk a little bit about moving forward but i just want to reiterate that we are very far uh, from the end of our AI journey. Uh, this really is just the beginning for every educational institution around the globe, really. Um, like every school worldwide, we are still adjusting to this new technology um, and we will continue to monitor new developments and new concerns around AI as they develop. Uh, we will continue to evolve and communicate our policies. Uh, we have already planned upcoming PD for our faculty um, we have Davian Cooper coming on November 24th to speak about authentic assessment in this world of AI. And we will keep educating our students about ethical use and practical application of AI to better prepare our community for a future where AI will be ingrained in nearly every aspect of nearly every profession. Um, we will continue to leverage AI innovations to improve our practices and stay current and keep evaluating that use of AI as an organization. We need to keep reflect, being reflective, um, but we have a lot more work to do, um, but we have moved farther along that continuum of understanding and confidence since spring, the spring. Actually, we've moved quite a bit further along, but we're far from that end point. Um, and we at least understand the road ahead and we've invested in tools to venture into this new era of education as an innovative learning community. So thank you once again for coming. I really encourage you to ask questions. I encourage you to share your thoughts and, uh, and, and I'm glad that you have come and shown your interest in this new exciting and, and, uh, and uh, innovative technology. <laughs>